kind of little sin at this podium today. Watch a lot of good public service do that and serve, serve our state well. It's a great honor and pleasure for me to introduce a great public servant. Today's honor is Baker, Honorable Governor James C. Justice II. Governor Justice is a native of West Virginia. He attended Raleigh County Public Schools and graduated from Woodrow Wilson Hospital in 1969. He also attended Greenbrier Military Academy as a postgraduate student. Governor Justice earned his undergraduate degree and master's degree in business administration from Marshall University. Governor Justice has excelled in every aspect of business, from agriculture to mining to tourism. He is the largest farmer east of the Mississippi River. His companies farm more than 50,000 acres of corn, wheat, and soybeans in West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. In 2009, Justice rescued the Greenbrier Resort in White Sulphur Springs from bankruptcy. Immediately after purchasing the Green Greenbrier, he brought major events like the PGA Tour, training camps for the National Football League and the NBA, and has returned the Greenbrier to its premier status as America's resort. Before being elected governor, Jim was the president and CEO of 102 different companies. Governor Justice spent his career creating thousands of jobs and understands how to put people to work. As our governor, Jim Justice has made education his top priority. He has increased funding for public schools and teacher pay in each of his first two legislative sessions. Of course, he had some help from the House and Senate leadership as well. Also, this session, he increased funding for higher education. Giving back to the community, is at the core of who Governor Justice says. He is guided by his commitment to the good Lord, his family, and helping West Virginia youth. Let's give a warm welcome to our governor, Jim Justice. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate it. Well, I don't normally stand because I've got a really bad knee. But I'm going to try to pull it off, okay? Let me say, first of all, thanks to these few people right here that are phenomenal friends, phenomenal servants to our state. You know, whether it be Andy that was just kind enough to introduce me, or Brian, or Roger, or Bray, we're now a new friend, David. First, let me talk about David just one second. EQT. You know, we should be really, really proud of the fact that we're in many ways a natural resource state. You know, I've said it, I said this long, long, long ago. But one of the problems that got us into a lot of the messes that we got into is we just truly have not been proud enough of ourselves. You just think about it. If you're in Iowa City, Iowa, you're dead gum proud to, that you're a farmer. Or if you were in Houston, Texas, you were really dead gum proud of being in the oil business. In a lot of ways, a lot of ways, we've been pushed into the darkness about the fact that our natural resources, whether they be coal or oil or gas, but just think, we have water and timber. We are so blessed, it's unbelievable with our natural resources. And what EQT is doing right now in this state is unbelievable, unbelievable. Now, in addition to that, they're giving back. And really and truly, that's the way we've been for a long time. But their stepping up to the plate today for you is truly, truly big time, and it's significant. There's a guy that works that's sitting right beside David here, and that's Bray Carey. Bray beat on me every day of the world in a campaign. And if, all, if anybody on earth should dislike Bray, it should be me. But I'm telling you, he's a good man. He does great work for this state every day and gets next to nothing. 
You know what he's paid? He works countless hours, seven days a week. You know what he's paid? I think he gets minimum wage for 20 hours a week because he has to get something. I'm telling you, he believes in education. He believes in you. And so, and right beside him is Roger Hanshaw, our Speaker of the House. You know, this is truly sacred ground. And at times in here, I'm sure Roger could pull his hair out in every way, shape, form, or fashion, but at the end of the day, he got us there. Now, our state's on the move, and it's doing good stuff. And I don't want to just dwell on that forever and a day, because I want to talk to you just one second. You are the recipients of an incredible scholarship program. Incredible. Their contribution just this year is a half a million dollars to you. And then you're going to go out and do something with it. You're going to absolutely study science, technology, engineering, math. It's amazing. You're smart. You're the smart kids. That's all there is to it. Now, is that just going to get you there? Now you listen to me and listen really good. Because I love kids and I love education beyond good sense. And I'm going to tell you wisdom right now. There's no way in the world you're going to get to where you want to get to in life. There's no way if you don't have a real passion for what you're doing. I don't care how smart you are or how good looking you are or how fast you can run or whatever. If you don't have a real passion for what you're doing, they're wasting their money on you. That's all there is to it. And in addition to that, let me just tell you just this. My dad would have always told me, son, I don't care how hard you try. I don't care how hard you try. I don't care how much effort you put in. I expect you to achieve, to accomplish. Don't confuse effort with accomplishment. I want you to achieve. Now think about this. Here stands in front of you a big guy that one time when I was your age was really skinny and then I grew another body. <laughs> now, but now just listen to this. Listen. When I grew up, I, my grandparents never had indoor plumbing. Now think about it. I am the American dream. I'm what every one of you says to yourself, you want to go try to attain the American dream. You want to do goodness, whether the dream is to do greatness for our environment, or the dream is to do greatness and be in business, or whether the, the dream is to do greatness for our people. You have a dream. So did I, so did I. I got there and it was tough. And then I decided to become your governor. And in all honesty, today with all the new Gizwiz stuff of social media that everybody can have a platform on everything all the time, there's a lot of people that hit at you. And it's tough. It's really tough. You may think life's tough for you right now. And I'd say you haven't seen nothing yet. It's going to get tougher. But you know what? The good Lord above blessed you with an incredible mind and blessed you to be right here today. And he made me Jim Justice for a reason. And that's why I'm here today. Because you see all these blessings, I'm not just going to go to the beach and hang out. I'm going to try to do everything I can possibly do to achieve to do what my dad wanted to do. The last thing I'd leave you with is just this. The road's gonna get tough. We want you to stay in West Virginia. We want you to either, if you leave for a while, come back to West Virginia. We want to be able to give you opportunity in West Virginia to do unbelievable great things. And we're better. We still got a long ways to go. The last thing I'll leave you with is just this. What if I were to say to you, what do you got to do to get better? What would you say? Tell me, what would you say? What do you got to do to get better? 
Sure to goodness you can talk. Tell me. I'm waiting. Tell me. What do you got to do to get better? Somebody. Put in the work, okay? It's somebody else. This side spoke. Now you speak. Practice. Practice, okay. Back over here to you. What do you do now? I've heard from two boys, and always the girls are smarter. Come on. Come on, girls. I heard you say something, but I couldn't hear it. Try, come on. Did you say work? Okay. I'm over here one last time. Scratching your nose isn't going to do any good. <laughs> what? Stay focused. I'm sorry? Believe. Okay, now I'm going to leave you with the greatest bit of advice right now, the greatest bit of wisdom that anybody could ever give you today. You said, work hard, practice hard, be focused, be disciplined, believe. All that's right. But the one thing in life that you better learn to do that's going to trigger you getting better and start you on the right way is admit you're doing something wrong. Think about it. What if I were an alcoholic and I said I'm going to work harder, I'm going to practice more, I'm going to be more focused, and at the end of the day, I'm going to end up an alcoholic. What do you do when you get saved in the church? First thing you do, stand up and say I'm screwing up. In all honesty in life, if you're willing, if you're willing to admit you're doing something wrong, it will take you off like you can't imagine right then, right then. I can't be more prouder, prouder, prouder of you than I am right now. I can't be more, any more thankful to EQT than I am right now. And all these great people that have made this day possible, now I'm going to leave and I'm going to walk down through there and I hope I'm not going to fall. But if I do, don't ever try to catch me. <laughs> Save yourself. <laughs> but I'll leave you with just this. I mean this when I tell you I love you. I do. I really truly do. And I could never be more prouder of you. You've got all your parents and in-laws and outlaws and everybody here that's looking at you. Be proud of them. They're really special. God bless all of you. Thank you for having me. I'm leaving y'all. <laughs>